Watch. The EFF is launching its One Million Members campaign in Soweto at the Hector Peterson Memorial. This follows the resolution to have a million members by December this year. A reporter Natasha Piri is following up on that story. Well, very good morning to you. And of course, to our SABC viewers, we're coming to you all the way from the Hector Peterson Memorial here in Soweto, where the EFF is just about to launch its one million EFF membership uh, campaign. And of course, uh, you would remember earlier on this year when the EFF had its pin up uh, in January, uh, the CCT had actually, you know, uh, deliberated and said that it would be focusing on growing the party this year and rebuilding the organization and, of course, intensifying its public recruitment drives ahead of uh, the national polls in 2024. The Central Command Team, uh, CCT, or other, uh, had actually resolved and had uh, branded the year 2022 as the year of the branch. And, of course, they will be openly recruiting recruiting people. You heard there the CIC yesterday saying that by the year of, uh, by the end of the year, t uh, December 2022, uh, the party should have uh, about a million uh, card-carrying members. But actually to talk us more through this, we're joined by the Secretary General of the party, Mr. Marshall Lamini. Uh, Mr. Lamini, you've been very busy this week in and out of court, SONA, and now you're launching uh, your campaign. I mean, what is the importance of this and how feasible would it be to actually reach those uh, hundred, uh, one million uh, targets? Well, greetings to the viewers at home. Yes, it's been a busy week, but it's, uh, it's who we are as the EFF. We're an organization that is busy because ours is a commitment to people of South Africa. Until all of them, they've achieved economic freedom in their lifetime, we're going to remain busy. The CCT met on the, the Central Command Team, which is the highest decision-making uh, board between conferences, met on the 21st of uh, January and took a resolution that we need uh, to go back to the branches. We, we need to go back to the basics. That's why it result that uh, this year it's a year of the branch, meaning that all of us as members of the EFF, from national leadership, all of us, uh, we're going to go back to our branches, renew our members, and make sure that we reach a target of one million, not just one million members in terms of data, but one, one million activists on the ground, because we know that the strength of this organization is outlined in our constitution is that the basic unit of the EFF is a branch. So we, we, this, this year we're just not talking just data collection, but we said all of us let's go and uh, do uh, membership uh, renewal, we're going to do membership verification so that even uh, those that join the EFF and then uh, they, 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 they are not active, the call is upon them to say the only way we're going to change the material conditions of our people in this country is for us to be on the ground physically and be with in communities and make sure that the issues of our communities they are attended by us. So we that's what we're coming here to do, to launch an EFF uh, uh, Red Friday as well, because we said that uh, part of the solutions is that we must do a public recruitment, because we, we have seen through our own diagnosis, because as an organization, we do what we call self-criticism, and part of the issues that we realize that some of the members that get recruited, they get recruited secretly at home uh, without proper induction after that recruitment then they don't get active because they were not inducted before they've taken some of them they, uh, we, they even get elected to leadership structures only once they are elected is the only time they uh, they realize that we've got so much responsibility so we're going to do a public recruitment uh, and every member of, of the public must join the EFF we're going to do public induction they must be inducted publicly so that before they take responsibility they know what is the EFF what is it about they must know that uh, joining the EFF it means allegiance to uh, to the seven non-negotiable cardinal pillars so all those things things are as part of rebuilding the organization so that our members they uh, they understand the policies of the organization they must not get shocked once they are members that we want uh, expropriation of land without compensation so it is a program today the president and the commander in chief is going to give the key uh, note address uh, in terms of uh, what is the plan uh, from here up until uh, December. But ours is to take it back to the basics, to the branches, to the ground, to our communities. Mr. Lamin, your target is 1 million um, members. What is your current membership? Look, the current membership now is sitting uh, at above uh, 600,000. But we are saying 
even those members, all of us, we are renewing because, as I'm saying, that we don't want to work, with, we don't want to deal with data. We want active uh, fighters, we want active ground forces that we can count. That is what part of what we're going to be doing is membership verification. So the branches have to go and call their own membership and say, uh, we are, want to verify these members physically so that all of us we get re inducted, all of us we understand what is expected of us. So we, we will reach uh, that one million easily uh, as members, but we are saying we don't want to one million just of data because that is not going to help us on building the organization. We need active people on the ground that we can touch and verify on a daily basis. And this campaign is also targeted at growing the EFF. I mean, in 2016, your numbers are at 8%. Last year, around 10%. You further want to grow the party towards the 2024 uh, national elections. What is your target for then? Look, we, the, the target is to get 1 million members that are going to be activists of the EFF, not supporters. We're talking members. And members, they must be activists. That means they must be part of the, uh, uh, the daily activities of the organization at a branch level, at a community level. They must be the lifeblood of the organization because the target is that for 2024, we're going for everything. We're going for a total takeover of, of the country. We knew what happened to 2021 and we had a, 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 a two-year slump because of uh, COVID-19. That's why we've taken a decision that now that uh, we believe COVID is, pa- is past us and it's never coming back again to disrupt society, it's time that we must go and be with our people because we haven't been uh, with our people for the last two years because of res- the restrictions. Let's also talk about uh, you know issues that occurred this week. Um, mainly besides your court um, case, uh, the president had a media briefing with members of the media. He spoke about the JSC. You know that uh, Commissioner, EFF uh, leader Julius Malem actually sits on the JSC. They've recommended Justice Maya to be the next Chief Justice. Speaking to members of the media on Thursday, the president had said that the prerogative actually lies with him. Uh, although the JSC has actually chosen Justice Maya, he will be consulting with political parties over this matter. Have these consultations actually happened between the president? Look, it is not consulted with us, but there's nothing to consult with us. There is a structure of JSC. But that he's the one that said he would be consulting with political parties after reading the report uh, by the JSC. No, but you must know that he's a democratic uh, elected president. He's not a supreme ruler. This is not his private property. He still works within the confines. Is that going to pass the uh, public scrutiny? Is, is it going to make, uh, because even if he's taking a decision, they must be rational. can't just take a decision because he's a president. He's a politician. He's elected uh, through parliament. So even if he's a president, yes, he's, he's got the final say, but they must make sense, they must be rational, they can't just uh, do things, because that means tomorrow he can just wake up and say, because I'm the president, uh, there must be death sentence against South Africa, it, it doesn't work that way, so he must stop dreaming, there is a process that was taken through the JSC, they said, on a long process with South Africans, it was done uh, in a transparent manner, with South Africans, they observed that process, and the uh, and, 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 and the candidate, uh, 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 Maya, is the one that was recommended, and we don't expect anything. That's why I said there's no need for consultation because all those things were done transparently. Why does want to do a secret meeting when interviews were done transparently and people of South Africa they saw it and they witnessed it. That's why even when there was that recommendation you could see from the from the public itself uh, that uh, everyone they were happy to say we saw her, we saw how she performed. Why she wants secret meetings now of some consultation? She must just go, he must just go and implement uh, what uh, the recommendation of the JSC. It is a recognized and a proper uh, structure. It's a lawful structure that JSC. So it's not some structure that was set up somewhere. It's set by parliament. It's members of parliament who are lawmakers elected to go there and take decisions. So they've done the work uh, as public ordinary members of the country. We witnessed those interviews. We saw what transpired and we agree with the recommendation of the JSC. So all it really needs to do is to go and implement that. If it's got respect of people of South Africa, if it's got respect of women, we are saying we're about to make history. Uh, after uh, so many years, we never heard a... Uh, we, 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 we never, we never, we never had a leader in that institution of a, of, 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 of a woman. He is a woman who must go and be uh, to go and head the JSC. So why do you want to uh, to, to deny uh, uh, that? So that means even the, the transformation that he's talking about is just a slip service. Now he must prove that he's serious about the issues of women, because if he doesn't appoint uh, that woman, 
he must know that in his uh, life he must never speak about women issues. You're currently in court against Afri Forum. I mean, it's too early to preempt what the outcomes may be. But I mean, in terms of the EFF, how are you sussing out um, everything? Do you actually hope that the judge will actually rule in your favor? Look, we leave that to the judge, but we were confident. We went to court, we presented our, our, our story, and everything that we've said to that court, we stand by it. So how the judge rules, because we, we're hoping they will rule in our favor, but one thing we are not ashamed of is who we are, and that one we're not going to change, regardless of uh, what the court says. Even if the court can rule against us, it's not going to change for who we are, fighting for our people and holding those uh, that uh, still in charge of for our economy and our land to tell them the truth. We're going to sp- speak the truth to the racist. We're going to tell them who they are. We're going to sing our songs. We're going to conduct our political programs the way we want to, to see it. Including court, it cannot uh, come and tell us of how to conduct ourselves on the picket lines. We are an organization that is grounded within the people. So until uh, the issues of land, the issues of economy, in this country are resolved. Those that are comfortable to uh, see our people living in squalor and in poverty, and they are comfortable to hold on to the land and hold on to the economy. They must know that ours is we're going to make them uncomfortable, so we're going to speak truth to the power. And the real power is those ones that control the JSC, the white monopoly that is speaking on this country. If the ruling party, they can't speak to them, then they must know ourselves are going to confront them. So nothing changes. Whatever ruling that happens, we're going to speak truth to power. Mr. Lamin, thank you so much for your time. Of course, that was the Secretary General of the EFF, Mr. Marshall Lamin. Just unpacking today's events, are also saying that their target uh, for the EFF membership should be one million this year. Also uh, outlining their road uh, to the 2024 national elections, saying that uh, his aim is actually to take it all. If you know, I mean, earlier on we spoke about the growth um, of the party at the polls, 8%, around 8% in 2016 to around 10.8% in last year's local government elections. It would be interesting also to know uh, that the number of councillors that, uh, you know, the EFF uh, actually had uh, from uh, 2016 was around 826 to around 10, uh, 1,000, I beg your pardon, and 66 in last year's local government elections. With that said, the stage is ready. It's all systems go for today's launch. And of course, as SABC News, we'll be giving you all the latest updates and developments in regards to the story. It's back to you, studio. All right, Natasha P. thank you so much. Northwest.